So my name is Ahmed Mukta. Um, I live and reside in London, UK. In fact, I grew up here my entire life. Um, and um, growing up, I come from a very, very average family to say the least. Um, I come from two very simple parents. My father was actually a full-time London bus driver. Um, my mother, she was just an outright go-getter. She did as much as she can to put food on the table for us. But as hard as my parents worked, you know, both of them combined didn't even make £3,000 a month. I was told growing up as a child, go to school, get yourself an education, go get yourself a degree, which I did. Um, and I graduated from a university back in 2009, 2010. I cannot remember the exact year. Um, and after that, I just ended up working as a retail manager. You know, I, I started with one company. Um, I worked for them for around seven, eight years. I started off from a low position, a customer advisor, and I climbed my way up to, be, to become a manager there. Um, and I was very, very hungry and motivated to change my life around. But then the biggest issue was, I just didn't know what to do and I just didn't know how to do it. And that's the biggest problem that most people face. So um, that's a bit about me. So that's a good question. What did I do before becoming an entrepreneur? So I was actually working um, as a full-time retail manager um, for a very, very large corporation in the UK. Um, I, I found myself working very, very long hours, um, just really, you know, it got to a point, you see when you're not really, because I, you know, an environment's either growing you or is either keeping you stagnant. Um, I felt like I weren't growing at the time. Um, I ended up working in this environment for around seven, almost eight years. And after that, I just really felt stuck. Um, and I really wanted to make a change in my life. Um, and what ended up happening was, you know, I found myself eight years went by and I just felt and, and I felt like I was in the same position. You know, I couldn't really live life on my terms. You know, I was struggling with time. I was struggling with money because the biggest problem is that um, when you're when you're holding down a full time job, you know, you don't really have time to fulfill all the other passions you want because your full time occupation is consuming you. So, th so that was one of the biggest challenges in my life. Um, the other thing was obviously lack of money, you know, whoever lives in London, you would know that expenses in London are very, very expensive. So by the end, by the time you're paid, there's, <laughs> you know, it's not just that is lack of money, but is also that there's a lot of the month remaining after you get paid. So, um, so yeah, I mean, finances was always a struggle, you know, and by the time you pay your rent, you help your parents, by the time you, you do this and pay your utilities, etc., etc., your bills, you know, money's gone. And um, that was my reality at the time. And I actually started off with only 900 pounds to my name when I first became an entrepreneur in 2013. I literally had nothing. Um, and it's crazy because think about this. I mean, I, I was working for a total of, you know, eight years. And after that time, all I had was 900 pounds to my name because it was just a cycle. So I was really, really looking for something um, to come my way. So what made me become an entrepreneur? Um, that's a very, very good question. Um, and I would say it was really a combination of things. Um, I would say the number one thing was definitely my family, was my parents. Um, in fact, I remember growing up as a child, um, <laughs> you know, like, it's gonna be crazy me mentioning this on video and I'm sure my mom's not gonna like this when I say it, but um, I remember things like, you know, when other kids had good trainers in school and we never really had them because I come from a household of many, many siblings. So, you know, we were really on a budget. So it was like, okay, fine, I'm taking you to the clothes store or the trainer store, but you can only spend 20, 30 pounds, that kind of stuff. So, you know, really, really on a budget. Um, but my parents did the best they can with obviously what they had and I'm forever grateful. So number one was really to repay them, you know, to change their life around, to you know, um, give them their dream retirement to, you know, for them to not worry about money, for them not to work again, to retire them, for them to have that dream lifestyle. That was my number one passion to retire my parents. And I'm grateful to say that in 2015, I was able to accomplish that. I was making enough money that not only that the money took care of me, 
but it also the overflow of money that I had was able to retire both my parents. So I'm grateful for that. So that was my number one reason. And the other thing was um, for myself as well to have more time freedom, to have more money freedom because I love traveling. I love seeing the world and I'm sure most people do as well. And um, today we know in order for you to travel the world, you have to have a combination of time and you have to have a combination of money. And at the time I didn't have that. So it was definitely to travel the world, live my dream lifestyle, make more money, have more time freedom. Because I remember when I used to work at the company I used to work for prior, you know, working the eight years, like I, I remember it was, it was so, it was so much on the go. I was so busy at the time that even though myself and my family were living in the same household, it was like we're living in the same house, same household, but we were in two different time zones because there was no time to even see one another because I was just so busy just pursuing my career and going after it. So um, I would say those were the main reasons. And the other thing was um, I really wanted to fulfill my potential. You know, I really wanted to live life to my um, full potential. You see, the reality is Every human being out there today, you know, I always use this analogy that we are all like Ferraris and a Ferrari is only as good as the track that it's put on. So let me give you an example. If you take a Ferrari and you put it on a road which every 20 yards has a speed bump, you can only test that Ferrari to 20 for every 20 yards because you'll have to slow down because to go over the speed bump. So you will never ever see what the full potential of that Ferrari is. You see, that's the way most people are. Most people are like Ferraris, but they're, they're, but they're in an environment which their full potential can't be seen. You see, so the reality is, Talent without the right vehicle really leads to nothing. But if you combine talent and you couple it with now the right vehicle, that's when dreams and wonders can really, really be built. So um, it was really just to bring that, <coughs> that inner potential out in me. So um, that's definitely the reason why I decided to get started. What did it take and what's my greatest achievement? Um, that's a very interesting question. So um, number one, look, when you're going after a dream, you know, it's gonna take all of you. You see, when people say, what does it take? I say, it's gonna take everything you got. Um, you know, your new life is gonna cost you your old one. Um, it's gonna take hard work. It's gonna take persistence. It's gonna take determination. And you have to think long-term. You see, the reality is longevity builds credibility and repetition is ultimately your reputation. Um, so one has to understand that, you know, keep, keeping cons consistent long-term, so long-term consistency beats short-term um, intensity, right? So long-term consistency beats short-term intensity. So that's what one has to understand. So. Believe me, there are going to be times you're going to feel down. There are going to be times it, it's going to be an emotional roller coaster. There are going to be times you're going to have doubt. You're going to have worry. You're, you're really going to second guess yourself. You're going to think to yourself, man, is this worth doing? There are going to be times where people are going to bring you down. But the key is one thing you have to remember is it's going to take everything. And um, your new life will ultimately cost you your old one. So, um, so for me, I remember times when I was down. I remember times when, you know, friends and family and the closest people, you know, that I knew were telling me, you know, this ain't gonna work. But I always tell people that, you know, your closest friends and family won't start supporting you until they actually start seeing strangers celebrate you. So, you know, I remember times where I was literally driving to other cities four hours away, you know, to show and share my business with people and I remember being mocked and laughed at. I literally remember like it was yesterday. I remember times where I was spending money going to this location, going to that location, paying for my travel, you know, sometimes even flying overseas to attend conventions, you know, going somewhere else to attend places where I can gain knowledge and wisdom from. I remember traveling to mentors just to sit down with them and get some of that knowledge that can maybe accelerate and enhance my business. I remember like it was yesterday. I remember times that I struggled when I didn't have money, but then the dream was bigger than my excuses. So um, 
it, it, it really does take a lot. You know, sometimes being an entrepreneur is a very, very lonely road. There are times you're going to feel lonely, you know, you're, you know, because not everyone can relate with you and you can't speak to everyone about it because not everyone knows what you're going through. So um, it really take, you know, it really did take a lot out of me. It really, really did, you know, um, but I always say, look, you have to sacrifice some things um, to get other things. Does that make sense? And um, my greatest achievement is becoming a senior vice president. Man, what a day that was. I remember like it was yesterday. Uh, what, what an absolute incredible day. Um, I remember being there with my family, um, my friends, our team, you know, being in a packed out arena, um, you know, the president of a company calling your name and you just, you just at that moment, how can I describe it? It's like everything just freezes and just stops in motion. And you really pinch yourself to say, is it really me? Is, is this happening for me? And you start to remember all the challenges, the journey, the grind, the hustle, the late nights, the sometimes even the lack of food because you were so busy and focused and engaged in what you were doing. You remember everything. And I just remember, I don't know how it happened. I was just very emotional that day. And I did, I honestly didn't intend to be. I promised myself, you know, I'm not going to cry. I'm going to suck it all up. I'm going to be a man. And it's just crazy the way it just happened. <laughs> you know, it was just completely different once I got on stage. And it's just so worth it. I swear to you, it's so worth it. Like if I can go back in time and, and do it again, I'll do it over and over again. And after all of that, you know, after all the struggles, all the adversities, everything, once you share your story and you've accomplished it, and you, you've done it, you've reached to the top, guess what? All the noise completely stops. Listen to me carefully, look. The way, I, I, the way you wanna see it is, just imagine when a plane is above the cloud, is absolutely silent. Here's the reason why. All the rain and the thunder and all the storms happen below the clouds. That's where all the noise is. But when you get to a certain altitude, all the noise stops. All the noise. And that's how it felt. It just really felt calming. And today, one of the biggest beauties of my life today is just having a life of freedom. You know, for me, I wouldn't trade that for anything. It's about just having the time freedom the financial freedom i've been able to fulfill passions i've always wanted to do i've traveled to many many parts of the world many continents many countries i'm continuing to travel i absolutely love it i mean it's 2019 and um i don't know how many tr countries i honestly traveled to this year i honestly lost count and i'm gonna probably c continue traveling to more countries throughout the year as well so that's one of the biggest biggest freedom today i have a you know a son and um, you know, my little boy is growing up every day. I get to watch him grow every day. It's just absolutely beautiful. And it would not have been possible without having the time freedom. So um, I would say that is definitely my greatest achievement by far. So what's my life like right now? Um, well, number one, um, a lot of it is family based. I spend a lot of time with my family, my loved ones, um, my little one, my, my family. I, I'm very, very family focused. You know, when people ask me, what's your net worth? I say, man, I'm worth my family and my friends. Um, I spend a lot of time with my friends um, as well. Um, I have a life where I'm currently um, just really focused on helping as many people as I can to really get to where I am. You know, we do that on a weekly basis throughout our business. I'm into a lot of passions as well. Things like I'm really into fitness. You know, I'm really, really focused on my health today um, because when I was building a business, that's just one area of my life that I kind of let go, but I'm kind of getting back into it and really, really focused on doing that now. Um, and yeah, and it's really supporting other things. There are a lot of non-profitable um, organizations I'm currently working with charities etc so there's a lot of things in a pipeline and there's a lot more to go um, this is just the beginning I'm excited about the future and I'm just really just right now scratching the surface I would say and um, I'm at a point where I'm just growing every day in my life and I always tell people until you grow yourself you don't even know yourself so 
I was at a place, you know, almost six, seven years ago where I didn't even almost know myself because I only knew the environment I was working in and that's the best I could be within because everyone's just as good as the environment that they were in. So I was only as good as that environment. But right now, because I'm growing every single day, I'm starting to know myself even more and more and more. So a lot of passions are starting to come out, a lot of things. So um, there's a lot that is to come and you'll need to stay tuned and, you know, to find, to, to see them all unravel in the future, I should say. God willing. What advice would I give to anyone who's starting out in business? Well, I would, um, I would honestly say if you're starting out in business and you're taking a look at this video, um, I would honestly say, number one, learn the business that you're doing. This is the key. You see, knowledge is everything, right? Knowledge is, is what you is what you need to know. It's so important because with, without knowledge, you can't apply anything, right? And then it's all about applying the knowledge you learn because applied knowledge is what's ultimately power. Um, so it's about learning as much as you can, applying it, um, give yourself time. And if I can give you one piece of advice, and I actually posted a video um, about this on my Instagram, you know, probably on, this video will, will probably go on my Instagram and YouTube as well. But, but if you scroll down to my Instagram, you will see a video that I did. And it's actually about the importance of really just kind of staying focused on what you're doing. I'm telling you, don't watch what someone else is doing. Don't compare, don't contrast, don't compete, right? Be happy for someone. But then at the same time, remember your story is your story. Be the best you can be. Grow yourself and think bigger than ever before. Like honestly, I'm telling you, whatever you're thinking now, think 10 times bigger. This is the key. Like you've got to make sure that you think bigger than ever before. And don't tell your dreams to small-minded people. Like, it, like really, don't tell, look, if you want to kill a big dream, tell it to small-minded people. Because the reality is, it will sound like you're bragging because they can't comprehend your dream. And this is why it's your dream. And with dreams, you know, dreams are not transmitted to someone else. Like, let me give you an example. If you're sleeping, right, my dream is my dream. Like, you know, we don't share dreams. Does that make sense? So, the, so if we're sleeping together, you know, we don't wake up like, oh, wow, did you see that? Like, did you see that dream? <laughs> you, know, you know, my dream is my dream and your dream is your dream. So remember, your dreams are your dreams. So really, the only validation and the only opinion that you need about your dream is yourselves. You see, you never ever see statues that were built for people who cried and quit. You only see statues that were built for people that conquered. You know, you'll never walk into the center of town and, you know, see a statue of so-and-so the average, you know, Joe the average. He was so average, we had to build a statue of him. You know, you're never going to see that. Anyone who there's a statue of is someone that committed and conquered. So my advice is stay persistent, stay focused, go after your dreams and you can do it. Give it some time and give it everything you have. And I promise you that you will get to where you want to go.